let's go to the carnal on this uh, right triangle application here. Suppose that a writer is on a Ferris wheel, uh, and the radius of that Ferris wheel is 125 feet. So it's a pretty big Ferris wheel here. Uh, the writer gets on at the bottom of the Ferris wheel at point P naught, all right? And which this, I should mention, is 14 feet above the ground. So there's like some stairs that get up to this mounting position for the Ferris wheel. And then after the, after the uh, Ferris wheel rotates a little bit, uh, his little bucket seat moves up here to point one, P1, in which case then the next group uh, can get onto that seat as well. So he's sitting there and, and our, our writer is thinking, how high above the ground uh, would I be right now? Assuming that the angle, that the, the central angle of this circle is gonna be 45 degrees. How high is the writer gonna be? So what is this distance H right here? So I wanna to present to you a different diagram that's gonna clean up this model a little bit here. So what we care about here is the circle, the buckets, the ramp, the stairs, none of that thing really matters. What really matters is the following observations here. So we know that the circle is 14 feet above the ground. That's gonna affect this distance H. We also know that the circle has a radius of 125 feet. So these two distinct radii in the problem are both gonna be 125 feet. And we know that the central angle from where our rider started to where they're currently parked on the Ferris wheel. That was 45 degrees. So these are the measurements we have in play here. And how is that gonna help us find H? So what we have to do is we have to form a right triangle. We don't wanna use this triangle right here because it's not a right triangle, nor do we wanna use the sector of the circle associated to points P0 and P1 because that's not a triangle either. It's got some curvature to it. So what we wanna do is we actually wanna consider, take the horizontal line. Why are we doing horizontal line? Because it's parallel to the ground. So take the horizontal line that goes through P1 and it'll intersect the original radius at this right angle right here, okay? Now this triangle in play is a right triangle and I'm gonna pull the picture over here. So we have this right triangle, the angle measure here is 45 degrees. We know that the radius of the circle is 125 feet. So that'll be the hypotenuse of this right triangle. And let's look at this unspecified number X. All right, we'll get, we'll get to X, why we care about X in just a moment. So we wanna figure out what's this distance here. This follows from a very basic, basic cosine ratio. So notice if we get X over 125, this is gonna equal cosine of 45 degrees, for which if we solve for X, we're gonna get that X equals 125 times cosine of 45 degrees, like so. So that figures out this distance X. Well, why does that matter? Well, the reason we care about X is because if we go, if we calculate the distance from the center of the Ferris wheel to the ground, we know that distance because this distance is 14 and this distance is 125. So the total distance above the ground to get to the center of the Ferris wheel, notice that's going to be 14 plus 125. Okay. But notice that if we take the distance from the center of the circle to the bottom of the ground there, that's gonna be X plus H. So this number right here is equal to X plus H. So the number H is what we wanna know. X is something we found using trigonometry. So solving for H, H is gonna equal 14 plus 125 minus X, for which we now see that X is equal to, just pl plugging it in here, we're gonna end up with negative 25 times cosine of 45 degrees. So at this moment, we can then start to simplify the calculation. Again, this is something you put into your calculator. Of course, 14 plus 125 is gonna be 139. Put into your calculator, cosine of 45 degrees, make sure it's in degrees. That'll give you approximately 0 0.0707. Times that by 125 and subtract, you're gonna get your estimate to be approximately 50.6 feet in the air. That's the, that's the passenger's current location. But that's based upon right this one, right? But as he goes to different places on our Ferris wheel, let me move this picture back up. If as the individual, as a rider keeps on going around and around and around and around, the height will change based upon where he is in the circle. And so what happens if we do a different location, right? What if the central angle this time is this one right here? Can we think of the height of the passenger with respect to the central angle? And that's that's of course gonna be the case. By mimicking our strategy from before, we see that H is gonna equal 14 plus 
125 minus 125 times cosine of theta, for which you can factor out the 125 and you're gonna get the h equals 14 plus 125 times one minus cosine of theta. And so that gives a formula of the height of the passenger given that central angle. But as 125, which is the radius of the circle, if we know the radius, and if we know this distance right here, sort of like the, the bottom height of the, of the circle right there, we'll call it y, we see that the height of the passenger is just gonna be, well, how high above the ground is the Ferris wheel plus the radius of the Ferris wheel times one minus cosine times theta of the central angle. This formula would tell you the height on the Ferris wheel for the rider at any moment given that information. So basically, if you're trying to measure uh, what's the height above the ground if you're on a circle and you know the central angle, then you can find it by this formula. It just follows from basic uh, SOHCAHTOA right triangle trigonometry. So that's going to then conclude our uh, lecture here, lecture number five about applications of right triangle trigonometry. Thanks for watching, everyone. I hope you learned something. If you did, please give this and all these other videos a like. Um, if you want to see more videos like this in the future, of course, subscribe to the channel. And by all means, if you have any questions, please post those in the comments below. and I'll be glad to answer them uh, when I have the opportunity. Bye, everyone.